What's going on, everybody? My name is Zilla Prince, and welcome back to another React video. Now, it's been, what, four, five or so months since I've reacted to any kind of SCP content on this channel? Um, well, that's because I took a break from watching SCP stuff for quite some time, and now I'm ready to get back to it. So, I haven't watched, haven't watched, yeah, it's been a while since I've actually reacted, but also watched uh, SCP content outside of recording videos so is gonna be me trying to remember everything about the scp foundation at the same time and get also getting right back into it because i really like watching the scp related content even though they don't really did particularly do well on my channel i just still like reacting to them because it's something i'm really into but it's just been a while since i've actually reacted you know reacted to scp stuff because i took that break but now i'm ready to get back into it and we're gonna start off with getting right back into dr bob he uh uploaded a video maybe this video maybe what two days ago no actually last week uh he, he rec put out scp 015 pipe nightmare if i'm pretty sure this is the pipeline that continuously uh expand it, trying to expand its network of endless pipes that are somehow sentient as far as i know but we're gonna find out in about three two one go three scp foundation agents stand before a large warehouse their mission is simple enter the building find the observation unit that has gone missing inside recover the data from it and leave it should be easy it's been a hot minute since i've heard from dr bob this can be really satisfying but the rundown structure they're <laughs> standing in front of is no ordinary building this is SCP-015. The leader of the group, a large muscled man who goes by the codename of Agent 6, slides open a large door on the front of the warehouse, and immediately the whole group is struck by a sight that makes them reconsider just how easy this mission is going to be. In front of them is not a wide open warehouse floor, but a cramped tunnel leading deeper into the building. The group has a job to do though, and so the three head inside. Agent 2 first, followed by Agent Lon, the data specialist, and finally, Agent 6, the expedition leader in the rear. As they enter the narrow hall of pipes, the light from their flashlights plays off the floor, walls, and ceiling. Flashlights are one of the only items allowed in SCP-015, and they okay. reveal what the researchers had told them in their briefing, that many of the pipes aren't made of standard materials, but instead are all sorts of strange substances like wood, glass, or even bone. What? The odd series of pipes have formed a twisting tunnel leading deeper into the warehouse. The group must be careful, eye. since the floor is uneven, with pipes occasionally sticking up out of the floor like tree roots, ready to trip the unobservant. The three follow the corridors of pipes along the path that they each had to memorize. As they come to branching paths, Agent 2 speaks the series of turns they must take aloud. Really? Left, left, right, left, right, right again straight right and so on as huh. they go deeper and deeper they'd have to follow okay. the directions exactly if they hope to reach the place where the modular robotic vehicle should be left straight straight again right just a couple more turns and they'd reach the point where the mrv had sent its last signal before MRV. going offline as they walk though they find that some of the passageways are getting more difficult to pass the pipes have closed in at certain points choking the already small tunnels down to mere crawlways. At one particularly narrow point, the group must get down on their bellies and pull themselves along the ground. Oh After Lon and Two exit the tight passage, Agent Six suddenly calls out to the two agents ahead of him. What is it? What's wrong? Two asks. I'm stuck, comes the response from Six. Lon and Two grab Six's arms and begin pulling. With a loud grunt from all of them, Six finally comes free. Oh. His pant leg is shredded from the thorny wood that one of the pipes in the narrow tunnel is made from, but he's free, and they can continue on. Oh boy. Finally, Wait. after what seemed like an hour oh. of walking, they finally find it. The modular robotic vehicle that had been sent in to investigate the current state of SCP-015. <clears throat> There's something very strange about the robot's condition, though. It looks like it has been speared right through its primary observation unit. A smooth black pipe that appeared to be made of dark fabric had pierced the vehicle right through its camera, but the lens didn't appear broken. Instead, it looked as if the pipe had somehow connected with it, docking inside the lens housing as if the two parts were made for each other. Other pipes wow. had protruded from the floors and walls as well, snaking into open spots on the vehicle and lifting it up a foot off the ground. They looked over the robot, which was held helpless in the air, 
its wheels slowly spinning as its internal battery ran down. The agents walked around the MRV, it's examining like it. It's like it's trying to make itself a part of the robot. That way, like a, a small part of it can try to escape the warehouse. At least that's what I think is going on. Looking confused about the fate that had befallen it, Six suddenly broke the silence. Well, what are you waiting for? Lon wasn't sure what to do, though. As she got closer to the robot, she noticed that a foul-smelling substance was dripping from the pipe that had merged with the camera. Her job was to remove the data from the MRV, but they also had strict orders not to damage anything in SCP-015. So what was she to do about the robot? Wasn't it technically a part of SCP-015 now? She was worried that if she removed the data cards, then SCP-015 might... Well, she didn't know exactly. Six didn't buy it, though. The researchers may have told them that 015 reacts, but he could see now that it's just a bunch of weird pipes. Maybe it grows or moves a bit. That's what you think. You're probably going to be dead, Agent Six. Bit, but <clears throat> how would it even know they were there? It hadn't shown any signs of sentience, let alone sapience. Oh, it, it wasn't going it to hang around to in here any longer than he had. It had to have shown some form of sentience. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a bunch of pipes inside that robot. To, though. <laughs> and if Lon wouldn't get on with it, then he would. Six moves to the MRV a... and flips open the data cover on its side. More of the fetid liquid pours out, but he ignores it. Lon and Two both look at each other. Did the other hear that too? It sounded like steam venting from somewhere deep inside SCP-015. Six doesn't seem to have heard it and begins to remove the thin data cards from the MRV. With the data now recovered, he decides to see if he could free the vehicle from the pipes. It wasn't necessarily a mission objective, but why let good foundation property go to waste when it's right here in front of them? Six pulls first at the MRV, then the pipes that were running into it, but he can't get it to move. It's completely stuck, seemingly fused to the pipes. Okay. Come on, we've got Dude, the data, let's get out of here. You're gonna get yourself says, killed. <clears throat> but Six isn't done trying. Six. He sets his flashlight down and uses both hands, pushing against the wall of pipes with his foot to gain what additional leverage. When suddenly, <clears throat> there's a creaking sound. Ha, I think I got it. But Six was mistaken. It wasn't the sound of the MRV coming free that he had heard, but the sound of the floor underneath him giving way. Six falls into the floor up to his armpits, and the you other two idiot. agents rush to help him. But as they do, they notice the glow and immediate burst of heat coming from the hole. Thickly flowing oh, molten glass shit. begins to fill the hole, and Agent Six cries for help as they desperately try to pull him free. His cries turn into screams of desperation as they each grab an arm and, after a struggle, finally managed to free him and drag him from the hole. This is Six is no longer screaming as he is pulled free, though. <clears throat> His eyes and mouth are locked wide in sheer panic. Lon is now the one who starts to scream, as she realizes that they have pulled only the top half of Agent Six from the yeah, hole above dead. the fiery pit. <clears throat> the bottom half Holy of his body shit. is completely gone and burned away by the <clears throat> heat of the lost. liquid glass. There's no time to be shocked, though, because pipes begin to hiss and ping all around them. A wooden pipe above two and lawn suddenly bursts, sending a cloud of dust flying into their faces. It's powdered glass, and it starts to pour out of the broken pipe, covering what's left of six completely. Two spits out a thick stream of blood, his mouth shredded from the glass particles, as lawn desperately tries not to rub them deeper into the cuts in her eyes. They both know they can't stay here, though. They have to run. The pipes are deafening as they move as quickly as they can back the way they came. It sounds like a train is barreling through the building. They're surrounded by chaos. Boiling chemicals pour out of one pipe. Tiny slicing rose thorns spray out of another. They come to a crawlway that's just a couple feet wide, but it's their only way forward, and they have no choice but to enter. Two dives in and starts crawling. Lon is hesitant, but a blast of steam from a pipe near her head convinces her she has no choice. Six basically got them all killed is what I could see. Choice, <clears throat> and she follows after him. Two wriggles through the narrow passage and is surrounded by more sounds of pipes creaking all around him. Each one seems like it might burst and pour who knows what deadly substance onto him. But he has to suppress his fear and keep moving forward. Finally, he emerges into a wider hallway. He turns and looks back at the hole. Lon should have been right behind him, but there's no sign of her. He sticks his head back in and calls for her. There's no response, but he can oh, hear no. her still in there, somewhere in the dark, struggling. He has to help her. Two gets back into the passage and starts crawling. She couldn't have been that far behind him, probably just stabbed? around the next turn. But as he crawls around the bend, there's nothing there. Just another wall of pipes. The passage has been sealed up. It's a dead end. Oh, he boy. presses his ear to the wall and can hear Lon screaming on the other side. 
He hits his flashlight against the pipes in anger. The pipe shakes for a moment, then bursts, spraying out a black liquid that covers his hand. It's some kind of corrosive acid, and he screams as it burns through his gloves to the flesh beneath. He quickly crawls backwards out of the narrow tunnel and emerges back out into the wider Ooh. passage. <clears throat> Chu cradles his hand, trying not to look at the exposed bone. I'm sorry, he cries as he runs through the tunnel of pipes towards what he hopes is the exit. I'll get help. I'll come back, I swear. Lon can't hear his promises, though. She heard what she thought was a pipe burst followed by Tu's cries, but she doesn't know now if he's dead or alive. She decides she has no choice but to go back the way she came. Maybe there's another way out. But after moving just a few inches, her feet touch a solid wall. She's trapped in a space no bigger than a coffin. She feels around, but there's nothing here in the dark. Nothing at all. Just smooth, fuzzy, warm wow. pipes. <clears throat> no way. There is something. A gap in the ceiling. But it's just the open end of another pipe. And now, there's something dripping out of it. Droplets of whatever the substance is land on her face, and then a full stream of liquid pours out onto her. She coughs as it gets into her mouth, but then realizes that it's sweet. It's honey? At least it wasn't molten glass or deadly acid. Oh boy, it's gonna Maybe be she bees. even survived for a time on the liquid until bees. another expedition team came to rescue her. Her brief moment of hope is cut short when she realizes that the pipe isn't stopping and that she's already lying in an inch deep pool of honey. Lon beats on the walls and ceiling as the honey continues to rise around her and screams for help. She tries to plug the pipe with her fingers, but it's no use. Nothing can stop more and more of it from pouring out. The honey continues to rise around her, and all she can do is scream and claw at the pipes that have created her tomb. She presses her lips to the ceiling in an attempt to gain one last breath before the honey completely fills the space. Her final choking gasps are sickly and sweet as the honey fills her lungs. Agent 2 keeps running through the tunnel of pipes. His hand no longer hurts, at least, either from the shock or from the fact that all the nerve endings had been burned away. The horrible sounds coming from the pipes seem to have stopped, too. Maybe he really would make it out of this alive. Lon might have found another way out, too. There's no telling how many routes through this maze of pipes exist. He would probably exit the building to find her outside waiting for him. He, she did, or Agent 6, though. <clears throat> he never had a chance after opening that cover on the MRV. His thoughts are abruptly interrupted, though, when his foot catches on an unseen pipe and he falls forward onto the floor. Or rather, he should have fallen on the floor. Instead, a pit opens up in the ground, leading to a steep, sloping floor of pipes. He screams and tries to stop himself, but the slick liquid covering everything makes it impossible for him to slow his descent, wow. and he begins to slide down the pipes. His dimming flashlight shows what seemed to be an endless tunnel of pipes stretching down into the dark. The tube of pipes twisted this way and that, slamming him into the walls on either side, tumbling him head over feet. And the descent never seemed to end. He screamed until his voice went hoarse and gave out entirely. He didn't have any way to mark the passage of time other than when his flashlight finally started to flicker and then dim before finally dying. He slid down the endless tunnel of pipes for what felt like days in the darkness, far deeper than they physically should have been able to go. When the friction of the pipes began to tear his skin away, it was almost welcome. At least there would finally be an end. Following the launch wow. of the SCP-015 recovery team, the data on the modular robotic vehicle was deemed non-vital and no further expeditions were authorized in order to try and recover it. SCP-015 is a mass of pipes, vents, boilers, and other various plumbing apparatuses that have completely filled an otherwise nondescript warehouse located in a major American city. Anytime the warehouse is not being directly observed, the pipes will begin to grow, filling yeah, nearly... It's, it's the, it's, I'm pretty sure this is the pipeline I've I seen a long time ago. I, he's only now getting the explanation? Holy crap. All of the available space in the building, but also trying to connect to other nearby structures yeah, this is the one I saw and a long other time subterranean ago. infrastructure. I remember this part where it's put, was trying to go underground to other houses and their, and their pipes. Yeah, this is the one I saw a very long time ago, but I never saw the uh, full documentary of it. Your systems. The current best estimate of Foundation researchers is that the building contains over 190 kilometers of pipes, which range from just 2.5 centimeters to over one meter in diameter. Wow. While some of these pipes will look new, others have the appearance of being rusted or damaged, with many showing signs of leaking. The pipes are made of a strange assortment of materials as well, including bone, wood, steel, pressed ash, human flesh, glass, and granite. Oddly, no pipes composed of lead, PVC plastic, 
copper, or any other material one would normally expect to be used for the production of pipes have yeah. been found. But by far the strangest anomalous quality of SCP-015 is that it appears to react to aggressors. Should the building detect that the personnel inside of it are carrying tools, or if they make any attempt to either damage or repair any of its pipes, they will trigger an immediate reaction. Pipes near the offending subject will often burst, spraying them with a variety of liquids that have included oil, mercury, rats, mercury. a species of insect not yet identified, ground glass, seawater, entrails, and molten iron. More and more pipes will continue to burst around the subject until they either retreat from SCP-015 or are killed. SCP-015 was discovered by the Foundation after reports that pipes emanating from a warehouse had mysteriously started to connect to multiple other nearby structures, with no obvious answer for how or why they had suddenly begun emerging from the structure. <clears throat> the pipes were eventually able to be cut back and are now solely within the warehouse once again, but the human cost of containing SCP-015 has been high. I was about to say, how many casualties did it take just to cut it down just back to the warehouse and how far did it expand to? To almost every house in the neighborhood? That's my big question. I need, to, I need to look at the file later when I'm awake. <laughs> when I'm fully awake, I have to take a look at the file when I have a... Uh, I'm awake. Let's keep going. <laughs> and so far, 11 SCP personnel have been killed in their interactions with the anomaly, and an additional 20 are still missing. Mm. All of the missing are presumed to also be dead, though there have been reports of banging and screaming coming from within the building that may indicate they are still alive in some form. SCP-015 has been classified as Euclid, and because the building itself is impossible to move, it has been effectively contained on site. The Foundation maintains a gap of at least two meters around the warehouse, and no structures are allowed to be built that make contact with the building's outer walls. Should any protrusions from SCP-015 be detected, the pipes are to be immediately capped and sealed. Internal exploration of SCP-015 is permitted with approval from senior staff, but following numerous losses within the site, expedition teams must consist of three members, all of whom are equipped with safety lines and GPS tracking. The teams are not allowed to bring any hand or power tools within the building, nor are they to attempt any repairs or maintenance of any kind while inside. There's no need to enforce these rules, though, seeing as SCP-015 appears more than happy to terminate the offenders itself. Wow. The SCP Foundation contains many anomalous locations, though SCP-015 may just be one of the strangest. But decide for yourself by comparing it to SCP-024, <laughs> another abandoned building with secrets of its own to be found inside. Nice and don't that. forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. Wow. Oh, coffee. Okay. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm so glad I saved this video. Glad I didn't watch it yet, because now I remember this SCP... Definitely. It's been a long time that I've looked up, uh, and I've heard anything about SCP-015. Really. So, I'm glad I watched that. Um, I need to watch more Dr. Bob videos. Since we're in the season of Halloween, I'm going to be doing a few more uh, SCP videos. I'm not going to be sure when I'm going to get them all out, though. That's the thing, because I work at night, and now I have to use my old Vegas program to render videos, which takes a while. Because the job I do, it's like eight hours to 10 hours 12 if anything so yeah it's kind of what my working has been that's why i haven't recorded a video since begin the beginning of uh october so expect delays for good reason um with that said guys hopefully you enjoyed today's reaction video to uh scp 105 i'll try and do some more videos by doc both dr bob and nukes top five because we're in the spirit of Halloween, I'm going to try and react to some creepy stuff. And also try to play some, you know, games until I get my OBS uh, properly fixed. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like, subscribe, all stuff. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!